la 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 Regardless of where you live, the color of your skin, your beliefs or culture. Technology in all of our worlds is clearly accelerating at a rate greater than that of which we can keep up with. Augsburg is a little bit different from other German cities because we have, we have a big group from Turkish people living here, big community of Russian Jews here in, in Augsburg. So the living together with many different groups, many different cultures, many different religions mm -hmm. is not new for Augsburg. Mm. The Fugerei is the world's oldest social housing complex still in use. Back in the late 1600s, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, great-grandfather, lived here. It is a government-subsidized community, first built in 1514, and as you stroll through this community of 67 houses and 147 apartments, you feel like you are in a small medieval town. Just a tour of the Fugerei is six and a half euro, which, by the way, is over seven times the annual rent of its current tenants. Today we're in a really old place. It's very important for Augsburg. Uh, this place is uh, about 500 years old. It's the Fugerei. Fugerei. Which is basically uh, the oldest social housing in the world. Wow, so what do you mean by social housing? How would you explain that? Um, it is uh, a closed place with uh, many small houses like this, uh, where you can live for like really cheap. People who live here, they pay about 88 cents a month for the housing, and also they need to do still at, until today three prayers a day. And they have to give back to the community? or beside the rent? Yes, like you see around here, they also do some jobs for the community and they are really a close community here. Also, you see there are fences around still until today. The doors at night close around 10 p.m. So then it is closed and only the community living in here is allowed to be here. During the day, you mentioned, sometimes it gets very crowded here with tourists. Yes, during the day, it's a very famous tourist attraction here. Um, they also uh, pay entrance, right? So that is also one way how this is financed. We come here very often. There's also some beer gardens around here. It's a nice area to walk around in the evenings. So we like to come here. One of the many things that fascinates me in my travels as an American are the deep, historically rich stories of people, cultures, and architecture that are hundreds, even thousands of years in the making and getting my American mind wrapped around just how the U.S. is still the new kid on the block by most of the world's standards. So this sits in the, in the center of Augsburg, this facility? Yes, from here it's about five minute walk to the town hall. 500 years ago, this became a convenient place for those who couldn't afford Yep. to live in standard housing. Yes. We'd have access to the city, access to a job, access to schools, things of that sort. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> you had an audience. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what would be the one thing about Augsburg that would surprise most people? Um. I don't know if it's true, but there has always been a rumor that Augsburg has more bridges than Venice, um, because we have a lot of uh, very, very small creeks in the old part of the city. Um, it, between every uh, street and every house, you have that small rivers uh, they used in the past, for example, for the textile industry, and every house has its own little bridge. Um, you can even do some surfing in the ice channel or surfing? go to the uh, Kanu uh, World Championship uh, River. Surfing? On a surfboard? Yeah, like um, 
there is a very fast river. You mm -hmm. could do some surfing there. Um, it, and this, it's called the Ice Canal, so the Ice Channel. It's really cold and really fast. You can swim there if you jump in, if you try to. It's really cold. Have you been in? Yes, I've been there last week when it was so hot. My crew loves to surprise me. So they really went over the top to get me to spend some time in Puppenkistet, the puppet chest in Augsburg. Die Puppenkiste ist eigentlich so für einen für Spaß für die Kinder. Ähm, ist es ist eigentlich so eine Art Handwerk, so ein Puppenhandwerk, was gelebt wird. Sie war, glaube ich, in den 60er Jahren, ist sie mal untergegangen und wurde gerettet. Also das sind Dinge, die wirklich ganz Deutschland kennt. Der Augsburg natürlich sowieso jeder. Ja, ich finde es eine schöne Tradition, sowas anzuschauen. Und ich glaube einfach auch, dass es insgesamt äh, die Stadt auch äh, wieder prägt und sowas. Und dass es auch für die Kinder heutzutage, die viel digital unterwegs sind, auch eine schöne Abwechslung ist. Man. Look, I've always been attracted to puppets. The creepier, the better. In fact, clown puppets may be my favorite. You can sit me on a couch to figure out why, but whatever you discover, it will be that I love me some puppets. In 1943, Walter Amechen founded this puppet theater as a way to entertain the children who have been living through the hell of World War II. It wasn't exactly a child-friendly time. During the war, the puppet stage had been destroyed, but luckily, most of the puppets remained undamaged. Whether it's puppets being controlled by people or robots being controlled by people, we tell ourselves that we, the people, are controlling our environment and all that comes into it. In these times of accelerated everything, technology, travel, work, and communication, I really wonder if we are the ones to control all that is around us or are we just holding on for dear life and telling ourselves a story that we are the master of our domain, the king of our castle? You're welcome, true future. <laughs>